Hey friends, are you ready for some amazing chicken recipes? Four of our favorite chicken recipes that we make on a regular basis. They are so good and some of them are just so simple. You would not believe how easy and quick these meals are. And if this is your first time joining in, my name's Susan and welcome. So sit back, relax, and let's start making some of our favorite chicken recipes. My ponytail is going to be going up because you know there's going to be some good cooking going on. And tonight we're going to make some green chili chicken enchiladas. It is a handwritten recipe and it is so good. The only problem is I don't have any Mexican cheese, guys. Oh my Lord, I don't know how that happened. But I do have some sharp cheddar and I do have mozzarella. So we will make it as good as we can make it. I do have the breast off of a rotisserie chicken. I do have a can of green chili enchilada sauce. Some green chilies themselves. Sour cream and cream cheese. And I believe that is all we need for this recipe. So let's get going in the pan for the first half of the recipe. So we're gonna add a lot of the ingredients to the pan and go ahead and warm it up. I'm gonna go ahead and add in the two chicken breasts that I pulled. I probably could have pulled them a little bit smaller, but that's okay. Whatever you have left, you can use on all kinds of other things. I'm gonna pour in about a fourth of the can of green chili enchilada sauce. There we go. About a fourth of it. That looks about right. I'm gonna put in the whole can of green chilies. And I'm gonna put the whole thing of cream cheese in here. There we go. And two tablespoons of sour cream, which I've, I've got some left over in this container. I think I'll just use whatever's left. And we're gonna go ahead and get the enchiladas made, or well, whatever you wanna call these. I make them different ways. I'm gonna pour a little bit of this green chili sauce in the bottom and basically just smooth it around. Ain't nothing fancy about that. I'm just letting it go. There we go. Now the next thing is the actual enchiladas. The best way to do this is just on a flat surface. I have let the chicken get nice and juicy. And now you just put a couple spoonfuls in this. Now you can roll it up like a burrito, you can do it like an open end enchilada, whatever you wanna do, however you wanna do it. It's gonna be good either way. And I'm gonna roll these, since the pan is about the right size, kinda of like this, I don't know if you can see me. Let me get it this way. I'm tucking it under, and then I'm just rolling it. And then I'm gonna set it with the roll, the seam, side down in the container. See? Seam. Down. Alright. I'm going to fill this up with the rest of the enchiladas and then we'll come back and I'll show you what you do. And I have rolled all of the enchiladas. Mind you, I only did four. I've got enough for probably four more. So this makes quite a bit, but it's only me and Danny. And like I said, if you have leftover, if you're a smaller family, you can use that leftover for so many different things. Now the next part is to put the green chili sauce on it. And yes, if we had a large family, this would cover all of them and be wonderful. We don't, so I'm still putting it all in there because it'll still be amazing. Since I do not have any Mexican cheese, I did find some, a little bit of cheddar. Because I'm not sure what exactly is in the Mexican cheese blend. I love it though. I've got some mozzarella. needs to be used up. Now this is going in the oven at 350 for 20 minutes and I'm going to put it under aluminum foil covered so it can cook. I probably will do it 15 minutes covered and 5 minutes not covered. So let's go ahead and get it in the oven. And here you go. I just got out of the oven. I did it for 15 minutes with the aluminum foil on and I took it off for probably 10 minutes. This cheese on top didn't melt as good as I like it but doesn't matter because this will taste so amazing. So let's get it cooled off first, because God forbid you're gonna burn yourself, and then we'll get it in the plate. Okay, and here we go. I've gotten one of the enchiladas out with some of the Mexican corn that I made to go on the side. 
You could have put all kinds of rice or whatever. I just needed something easy and quick because, you know, whenever you get home late and you're cooking something good, you don't need a whole lot of sides because who knows how many of these Danny's going to eat. But here you go. The green chili chicken enchiladas and they're what's for supper tonight. And let's make some instant pot killer chili. It does have a few ingredients, but it's really good. And it takes no time at all. The biggest part is putting all the ingredients in. So let's go ahead and go through the lineup. Butter, cornstarch, garlic powder, paprika, cumin, one can of corn. It costs for two. Danny is not big on corn in soups or stews. So I'm only putting one in. You know, you, you make it the way you think your family will like it. And I think he will enjoy it better with only one can of corn in it. I've got some celery, some onions, some navy beans. This is some chicken that I got from a rotisserie chicken. Pulled it. I'm going to use the bones for bone broth. You know how I do it. But this is going in the soup today. I've got some oregano, some chicken bouillon, some salsa verde some rotel, cream cheese, and five cups of water. So this is everything you need to make the killer chili, and it's in the Instant Pot. So you can't have more easier than that. So let's get to putting everything in the pot. And I've turned the Instant Pot on saute and let it get hot. I'm gonna go ahead and add the butter in so it can be melting. And that is homemade butter that I made, y'all. First time. I don't think it was too bad either. It looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and let this melt down just a little bit. And then we're going to add in the celery, the onion, and I'm going to let this saute for just a minute. Ooh, it's starting to get a little too hot down there. That's okay. I'm going to let this saute for just a minute. And it's turning a little opaque, so it's time to add the rest of the ingredients. It says four minutes. My pan's too hot for that. You see how the butter just about got nice and brown already. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stir in the garlic powder, cumin, smoked paprika, the bouillon base, and the oregano are going in. And now that all that's sauteing pretty nicely, I'm going to go ahead and add the five cups of water, which is going to not only cool it down just a little bit, but it's also going to make it to where I can scrape up all the good bits that are on the bottom here. And I'm going to use my spatula to kind of scrape those up real quick. And I've turned the, pan, the pot off. I'm going to go ahead and add, it calls for two teaspoons of salt. I'm just going to add a little salt. And it calls for one teaspoon of pepper. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of pepper to this. I'm going to go ahead and add in the chicken. Which I pulled from a rotisserie chicken. And try to separate it out just a little bit. Once it cooks, it'll separate down itself. So that's not a problem. And before I put the rest of the ingredients in, I'm going to go ahead and put the top on. Turn it to soup and let it cook for 12 minutes on soup. And this is cooked for 12 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and put in my meat cooker thing into the Instant Pot and get the chicken all shredded up. If you had dried beans in this, you probably could not do this and you'd need to take the chicken out to get it separated up. I do not, because I am using canned beans. I just don't have time for the dry beans today. So, I think I've got pretty much all the chicken separated up. Now let's add the rest of the ingredients into the mix. We're going to go ahead and add in the one can of corn, the can of navy beans, can of Rotel, and the container of Salsa Verde. There we go. Now, I do need to go ahead and add in the cream cheese. I've already blocked it up, or cut it up into blocks. 
So all I have to do is basically divide it up and put it into the soup. Be careful, it is hot. It will pop up and get you. Now I've stirred this up good. I've added all the cream cheese. I just need to let the cream cheese melt, which is why I cubed it up. Once the cream cheese is completely incorporated in the soup, then we can decide if we need to thicken it up or not. It's looking decently thick right now. But let's go ahead and let this cook just a little bit, and then I'll bring you back and we'll see if we need to thicken it. And I've let as much of the um, cream cheese melt in as I can. I have gone around the sides and smashed the cream cheese and let it melt. So now this is ready for us to eat. I've got the debate on whether to add a little bit of cornstarch into the mix and thicken it up. And it's not as thick as I would like it. There's lots of chicken in there though. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of cornstarch to it and then get that in the mix. And I've got a cornstarch slurry I'm gonna go ahead and pour in to thicken it up. This is about three tablespoons of cornstarch and three tablespoons of water. And I'm gonna leave it in here for just a minute. I'm debating on whether I wanna add some more navy beans. It's supposed to be a chili and it's not quite looking like it to me. I may want to add the other navy beans. Let me do that. And I know the recipe doesn't call for it, but I like, if I'm going to have something that's chili, I want beans in it. And this is one more can of navy beans, just because I want to add them in. Now, whenever you look at it, that gives a lot more of the beans. I'm going to go ahead and let this set for a minute and warm the beans up and then it'll be time to plate it up and here you go this is the killer instant pot white chili i'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of sour cream in the middle and a little bit of mexican cheese all right and here you go killer white chicken chili and it's what's for supper tonight And we're going to be making some Cajun chicken tonight. I have got some cayenne pepper, some Slap Your Mama, some Creole seasoning, brown sugar, some minced garlic, honey, chicken bouillon, rotel. I've got some oregano, heavy whipping cream, lemon juice, and some Texas peat, a little bit of butter, and I've got some chicken. These are chicken tenders that cost for Two large boneless skinless chicken breasts. I went ahead and just got six chicken tenders. I figured they'd be just about the same size. And we're going to go ahead and get started on getting those ready for the pan. And I'm going to go ahead and put in the chicken broth. I'm going to go ahead and mix this up before I get the chicken ready. The chicken, bre the chicken broth, the heavy whipping cream. This is the uh, Cajun spice, which is... Um, one teaspoon of Slap Your Mama and one teaspoon of Creole seasoning in this. Because I want to, and I've got the cayenne in this and the brown sugar. So all that's going in. I'm going to also add one tablespoon of honey, or the equivalent there is. There we go. And two teaspoons of hot sauce, which I'm just using Texas Pete to make it spicy. There we go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and whisk this up and set this aside so we can get the chicken marinated. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add the flour in. I'm gonna go ahead and add some of the Slap Your Mama and some of the Zatarain's Cajun in. Slap Your Mama is really good and flavorful and hot. And of course, the Zatarain's is more of a just regular Cajun. I love the Slap Your Mama. It adds a lot of flavor to it. Now, what I'm going to do is go ahead. If you were to have a big, thick breast of chicken, you might need to beat it till it's thinner. These are not. These are tenderloins. So I'm just going to go ahead and rub them in the mixture. And then once I get some flour over top, we're going to be putting them in the pan to cook on about a medium heat until they get completely done, which won't take but a little bit. So let's go ahead and get these finished up. 
And I've went ahead and flipped the chicken. It's looking really good. It's got a little bit of brown going on on it. So it's looking really tasty. And it smells really good. I did add a little bit of that uh, Spicy Mama to the top of it on the other side. So let me go ahead and let this fish cooking, and then we'll take it off and I'll show you what to do next. And I've got the chicken out of the pan and I'm gonna go ahead and add the juice from the roast hill into the pan. And let that simmer just a little bit. It is on low, so it can simmer. And I'm going to go ahead and use a spatula to try to get up all the nice tasty bits. Ooh. It's still pretty hot. And I've let this calm down just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and add in the three tablespoons of butter. And let that heat up just a little bit. And the garlic. Now this is going to cook for about one minute until the garlic starts to smell in. Really fragrant. And then we're going to add something else. And this has been cooking for just a little bit. It's a, as you can see, it's boiling just a dab. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in the flour mixture, which is three tablespoons of flour. And I'm gonna go ahead and get this all nice and sauteed up. You wanna make sure that this flour is cooked just a little bit. You don't have to cook it much, but just a little bit so it doesn't have a floury taste to it. See how that's bubbling up? That means it's ready for me to add the other ingredients. And I'm going to be adding in the chicken broth mixture, which I did add the oregano into. I didn't realize it needed to be added. So I'm going to go ahead and add this in. And then we're going to let this simmer for just a little bit until all of this incorporates together. Now we have all of this mixed together. I am basically going to let this simmer for just a little bit until it starts reducing down. And once it starts gently boiling and starts reducing, I'll add the next item. Well, it's bubbling and reducing. Now, look at that. It smells so good in here. I'm going to go ahead and add the Rotel in. I'm going to let this keep boiling just a little bit while I'm mixing this. Look how thick this is getting. Oh, my gosh. This is going to be an awesome sauce. I'll tell you what. Look at that. That is all. And I haven't put any cheese in yet. Do you see how thick that is? I don't know if you can. Look at that, how thick that is. That is just thick. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put the cheese in next. I'm going to do a little bit of a time and then let it melt down and then put some more in. This is, it calls for cheddar jack. Don't have any. I had some Kobe jack and some cheddar and I mixed them. So, you know, use what you got and I'm sure it's going to taste just wonderful. That's not a problem. And it smells amazing. Oh my gosh. Okay, let me finish letting this melt out just a little bit. The cheese is nicely melted. I'm going to go ahead and pour in a little bit of the lime juice. And I'm going to let it mix in with the bunch. And there's all of it. All right. I hope it's coming off on camera. This looks so amazing. Can't never tell whenever you're recording it because, you know, sometimes you think it looks really good and then you look at it on camera and you're like, oh, it didn't look that great on camera. Guys, this smells amazing. I mean, amazing. Whole house is smelling like mm, good food. So let me go ahead and get the chicken put back in this. And it's still boiling a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and add the chicken back in. Look at this. I mean, if y'all could just smell it, it would be, oh, you would know this is going to be good, and I haven't tasted it yet. I'm going to go ahead and spoon a little bit over each of the chickens, so they're hidden in the mix here. I mean, this is thick, thick, wonderful, and amazing smelling. And I'm going to put this on a low to let it simmer for about four minutes. And I'm going to cover it up. And then, guys, it'll be time to eat this amazing meal. Guys, I hope you can see how amazing this looks. It is just, look how creamy this is. Can you see that? How creamy this is? Oh, my goodness. I can't wait to taste it. I'm making my plate first. And I made some rice with this tonight. I'm going to go ahead and put three pieces of chicken on the rice. You could always add whatever sides you wanted to this. You know, it's just me and Danny, and we just cook enough for us three. Get on there. 
Here we go. Now, I need to get some of this wonderful juice on here. I want you to look at this. Look at that. Oh my gosh. It is amazing. I hope it tastes as amazing as it looks. So, let me go ahead and take a bite and let you know what it is or what it tastes like. Okay guys, and here is the Cajun chicken. And let me take a bite. I don't like holding the camera while I'm eating, but you know what? For this one, I'm going to do it. You got to see it look chicken cooked perfectly. Okay, it's going to be hot, I'm sure. Let's see how hot it is. Guys, that is really good. It is a little spicy because I put the Slap Your Mama on it. Oh my gosh, it tastes so awesome. And I didn't put any of the red pepper flake or any of that in it. I just put what I put in it. And this is an awesome meal. Glad I tried that recipe. Y'all have got to try it. It is so good. And let's get to making some chicken pot pie with phyllo dough. I've got some rotisserie chicken that I pulled. That's just the white meat. Some butter. Celery. This is my chicken spice. Some onion powder. Some fine garlic powder, which is all right in here. An egg. Onion. Creamy chicken soup. A can of mixed vegetables. This is some of my homemade chicken bone broth. And then some phyllo dough or puff pastry sheets. So I've got all this ready to go and a bowl to put it in. So let's get to getting stuff into the frying pan. The oven is preheated to 350 degrees. So it's time to cook. And I have got the frying pan turned on. It's actually medium high. I'm gonna go ahead and put some butter in. The celery is going in and the onions are going in. And I'm gonna let these saute for just a little bit till they get a little bit fragrant. I forgot to put this in the lineup, but I'm gonna add about three tablespoons of flour. That way I can go ahead and thicken it up a little bit as it's cooking. Let me go ahead and stir this around. And now we need to get going with the rest of the ingredients. Now this is already cooked down just a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and add the bone broth, which is gonna make it taste so good. And I turned it down to about a medium because it was a little bit too hot. And now this is starting to boil a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and add in the chicken. The chicken is um, refrigerator cold. It was frozen, but I defrosted it a little bit. So I'm adding that in. And then I'm gonna go ahead and let this get warmed up in the nice good juices. Ooh, that thickened it up nicely. I'm gonna go ahead and add in the can of mixed vegetables, the spice mixture that I have, and let that mix around a little bit. I'm hoping this will be good and easy because I'm all about easy recipes. <laughs> Something quick, easy, simple, that's what I love. Right. And I'm gonna go ahead and get the cream of chicken soup out to add to the mixture. And that's looking really good. Go ahead and get that mixed around. Now I'm gonna put the lid on this and let this simmer for about two or three minutes. And then we should be ready to assemble our chicken pot pie. Oh, I just realized something. I don't have phyllo dough. I got puff pastries. <laughs> We're going to roll with it, though. You know, you can make a recipe out of whatever you have in your pantry. Um, I pretty much had all of it. I didn't happen to go get anything other than the, I got puff pastry instead of phyllo dough. Oh, well. I'm going to go ahead and put the puff pastry on the bottom. And just let it droop over because I'm going to put the top on it and it will be what it will be. It will be a chicken pot pie of some sort one way or the other. Now I'm going to go ahead and put in the chicken mixture on top of the phyllo dough or on top of the puff pastry, excuse me. Look how good that looks. That's already looking good. And that does smell amazing. Oh my gosh. 
I'm gonna add a little bit of my chicken spice and I will put it down below. Y'all know I love my chicken spice. But anything that I make with chicken on it, it goes in it. And now the next thing is the second thing of puff pastry is gonna go on top. Now you can make this as pretty as you want to or you can make it as rustic as you want to. And since I wasn't thinking whenever I got this, it's gonna be rustic. <laughs> It's gonna be what it's gonna be. And I'm gonna put this kind of this way on top and just let it drape over the sides. There we go. And I am going to give it a little bit of a whitewash with um, some egg and water. That way it'll look pretty when it comes out. All right, all of it is completely covered now. It's time to put this in the oven at 350. You got one thing saying 20 to 25 minutes, you got another one saying 30. I'm gonna check it out at 20 minutes and see what it looks like. It's probably gonna take about 30, I don't doubt. But we'll see what we get when I bring you back. I just got it out of the oven and I hope it looks as good as it looks here on the screen. It is flaky and crusty. And it looks really good. I put it in for probably around 30 to 35 minutes to get it this brown. But it is looking amazing. Let's go ahead and get it plated up. And I dipped it out. And this is actually one of the corner pieces. Look at how fluffy that is. Oh, and it smells, and it smells amazing. And it tastes divine. So yep, even though I messed up a little bit, it is so good. And it is chicken pie with <laughs> puff pastry <laughs> instead of phyllo dough. And it's what's for supper tonight. Weren't those chicken recipes just delicious? Oh my gosh, they just make your mouth water. And trust me, whenever you make them, your family will love them too. They are so good. And if you haven't already, press that little button down below and subscribe so you don't miss any of the fun. And until next time, see you then.